Hi, I'm John Barron from Google Research, and in this talk I'll be presenting our work on MIPNERF 360. Neural radiance fields are a very effective way to do view synthesis, and NERF really excels in two constrained settings which were explored in the first NERF paper. These are synthetic objects without any background viewed from all angles, and real-world scenes where the camera is always facing the same direction. This work is about how to deal with unbounded scenes, so we're focusing on scenes where there is a main object of interest in front of an elaborate and interesting background, and where the camera rotates around the object. Our model is based on NERF, which uses the weights of an MLP to model the volumetric density and color of a scene, and which uses a rendering model that looks a lot like ray tracing. We're building on top of a NERF extension called MIPNERF, which casts cones instead of rays, and uses multivariate Gaussians to represent 3D volumes in the scene. This change lets MIPNERF deal with aliasing and scale more easily. There are three major problems when trying to get MIPNERF to work well on unbounded scenes, and the three main contributions of this work are intended to address those problems. The first problem is in terms of parameterization. Unbounded scenes are, by definition, unbounded, but MIPNERF needs its inputs to be in a bounded coordinate space. To deal with this, we warp the MIPNERF Gaussians into a non-Euclidean space using a technique that looks a lot like an extended Kalman filter. Another problem with large scenes is that they're often very detailed. You can fix this by making the neural network underlying MIPNERF much bigger, but this makes training painfully slow. So during optimization, we train a small proposal MLP to bound the geometry predicted by a large NERF MLP, which lets us construct a high capacity model that's relatively cheap to query. The third problem is that in bigger scenes, 3D reconstruction becomes inherently more ambiguous. In practice, this results in lots of artifacts. To fix this, we introduce a novel regularizer designed specifically for MIPNERF ray histograms. Let's talk about that first problem of parameterization. Here we have a toy flatland scene with three cameras. In MIPNERF, these cameras cast Gaussians out into the scene, and in large scenes, this results in Gaussians that are very far away from the camera and very elongated. This is a problem for MIPNERF, which requires a bounded coordinate space and works best when Gaussians are somewhat isotropic. To fix this, we define a warp that smoothly maps all unbounded scene coordinates into a ball. This warp is designed to counteract the nonlinear spacing of the MIPNERF Gaussians, which itself is a consequence of perspective projection. To apply this contraction to MIPNERF Gaussians, we use what is basically an extended Kalman filter. The non-Euclidean space inside this ball is where we're going to represent the inputs to our MLP. To use a high capacity model without making training prohibitively slow, we have to redesign MIPNERF's course-defined sampling procedure. MIPNERF trains a single MLP that is evaluated in a course-defined way, where each ray is repeatedly turned into a histogram that is sampled from to produce the inputs to the next scale. The input image is used to supervise the renderings produced at each scale, which is a little convoluted because we only really care about the final rendering, and we don't care about these course renderings except that the histograms that generated them happen to work well for resampling. So we take a different approach and split the model into two MLPs, a NERF MLP that tries to reconstruct the scene, and a proposal MLP that just tries to produce coarse histograms for resampling. The proposal MLP isn't trained to reconstruct the image, but is instead trained to distill the NERF MLP's model of scene geometry. This lets us have a small proposal MLP, which we query very often, and a large NERF MLP, which we query less often. To train this model, we need a loss function that encourages NERF histograms to be consistent with proposal histograms. To illustrate this, on the left we have some true 1D distribution, and on the right we have two histograms of that distribution. Because these two histograms are both summaries of the same underlying distribution, we can make some strong assertions about how they must relate to each other. For example, the weight of that bin highlighted above must be no more than the sum of the bin weights that overlap with it in the histogram below. With this fact, we can construct an upper bound on the weights of one histogram using the weights of the other histogram, shown here. So during training, we impose a loss on the histograms produced by the two MLPs that penalizes any violation of this bound, shown here in red. This encourages the proposal MLP to predict an upper envelope of the scene geometry predicted by the NERF MLP. The last component in our model, which addresses the ambiguity problem, is a straightforward regularizer on each ray's histogram. We just minimize the weighted absolute distance between all points along the ray, and this encourages each histogram to be as close to a delta function as possible. We evaluated our model on a new data set of challenging indoor and outdoor scenes, and it outperformed all NERF-based and non-NERF-based prior work we were able to find. Here's a rendering from our model on one of those scenes. Given a couple of hundred posed images, we're able to produce photorealistic renderings from unseen camera positions. We can also query this model to produce depth maps, which exhibit a lot of fine-grained detail. And that's it. Please check out our project page for more videos.